Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be installing an amplifier and subwoofer in this 2014 Volkswagen Tiguan. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate that amp and sub to the existing factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Alright, so here at the bench, the parts that we're going to need for our install, first and foremost is the amplifier that the customer has chosen to go with. It's the CT Sound 700.1D. It's a 700 watt RMS amplifier that does that power at 1 ohm. And the subwoofer we're pairing this to is already in the car, but it's a Rockford Fosgate P3 and the Rockford Fosgate box wire to 1 ohm, so it's a DVC 2 ohm subwoofer. Now to wire that in the vehicle, uh, we're going with this new Concepts 4 gauge amplifier wiring kit. Um, this includes everything that we'll need for the install. Now, like I mentioned before, we are running the factory radio. So in that case, that radio is not going to have any sort of audio output for an existing aftermarket amplifier. So what we're going to need is some sort of line out converter to allow us to integrate that factory audio system to this new amp. Without further ado, what we need to do is take our wiring kit apart. We got to start planning our power wire run from the battery area through the firewall. And today we're going to be installing this guy up underneath the driver's side front seat. All right, so our battery is on the driver's side um, in the battery box underneath the cover here. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna drop the uh, knee buster panel, that's the beauty panel that's up underneath the dash to give us the access we need. And then we're gonna start pulling wire. Now here in the vehicle, if we go up underneath the steering column, we actually don't have any sort of beauty panel up underneath ours, at least in this trim. But looking at firewall access, where to run our wire through, fortunately, Volkswagen has already provided a big, huge, thick rubber grommet that's not being used. Um, in the event you have the automatic, this is generally where the clutch pedal is fed through the firewall to the clutch uh, master cylinder back behind there. Unfortunately, we don't have the manual, and so this is a nice soft rubber piece here, and we actually have a nice space to run a wire through. All right, so what we've done here is got our notorious hanger that we use here on the channel. We went ahead and just pulled that grommet out for now. It's on the bench and ran our hanger that's directly into the engine bay, which is awesome. And uh, we just fished it from the other side. We'll show you where it pokes through. So on this side, this is where it pokes on through. Again, no need to pull the battery box, which is great. And then what we've done here is we just taped our power wire to it. We'll go from the inside and go ahead and pull that on through. Now, to get your panel out that's here um, in the vehicle, um, it's, it's actually not too difficult. It looks difficult, but if you follow my steps here, it should be pretty easy. First thing you need to do is pull this back as far as it goes, and it's usually about that far. It doesn't go much further. What I do is then get a flathead screwdriver and go right underneath the front lip here and force back, and as you can see here, there's a clip that you, you gotta work out. Once you work that clip out, just like so. This actually can pop right off the uh, the post there. And what that's now gonna allow you to do is have access to this with that same flat head screwdriver. You're gonna go ahead and force off this top finger on it until it pops so it doesn't disappear on you. What it's gonna now expose is a flat head screw. So go ahead and get your flat head screwdriver. Pull that all the way out just like that. Again, don't lose any of these pieces. And then finally here, with that same flat screwdriver, then you can work this base out. And now there's nothing left holding on the panel here except for pressure. So as you disconnect and unclip these points along the base here, this just slides on out, pretty simple. So here's the grommet that we went ahead and pulled out. As you can see, it uh, has a nice little center punch that we punched out and uh, we actually used just a step bit and cut that little hole there, um, smaller than the wire, so it still seals up and over that wire. 
Essentially here, we'll feed our power wire now through it and reseat this back in the firewall, creating a weather-tight seal. Now we went ahead and popped our panel off here, um, also just the left side kick, just so we have the space needed to run this now power wire that we pulled into the cabin up underneath the carpet to just right up here under the driver's side front seat. Really depends where you're gonna be mounting your amplifier. Ours happens to be small enough where it actually fits really well under the seat. Now we don't have the factory premium audio sound system, so we don't have a factory amp there. It's an open space and it's a great location for our amp here today. So we went ahead and got our grommet in there. It's all resealed, so we can reassemble this. Now, with all this out of the way, it gives us a lot of space here to run our wire up underneath. Now we went underneath the mat, up underneath the carpet, and there's a little spot here where it's gonna to go to the positive port of our amplifier. That terminal's gonna be on this side, and so that's why we ran it through that side. So that's where our amp's gonna sit here, and now for our ground, we're gonna probably use that same whole location, feed it up underneath, and up underneath here are factory ground locations, which is perfect. So we're gonna use that and run our ground to those factory ground. So we're here back at the bench. Now we are preparing our amplifier for install here. Um, our amplifier fits in that location great up underneath the seat, um, but we still want a way to tack it and hold it in place without it sliding around on the carpet. So we cut this piece of uh, ABS plastic. That's about 16th inch. We can go a little thicker, like an 8th inch. inch. Um, but we mounted our amplifier to that, and it's going to tack the carpet here. And this will prevent it from sliding around up underneath that area. Now, we started wiring up as much as we can here at the bench before we get it into the car. So this is our speaker wire output on the side of the amplifier, and we added some uh, 12 gauge wire ferrules, crimp those on, and basically those will fit in those terminals. It just keeps it nice and clean. We'll tighten that down. Um, we have our power and ground here at the amplifier as well. We're also preparing those too. Now the power wire is already run, so we'll have to connect that when it's in the car. But for the ground, we can actually do it here at the bench. Okay, so our amplifier is basically as far as we can go here on the bench. Um, we got our speaker wire hooked up. We got a remote turn on. RCs and base knob that need to run up towards the center console here. The ground's ready to go. So at this time, let's go ahead and get this thing in the car to start making our final connections at the amp. All right, so we got our amp in. We went ahead and connected our power wire that we pulled through there. We get a good shot there. Ran through those little holes in the carpet, which is perfect for our amp. On this side, same thing, there's already a hole in the carpet, which is great. And we pulled our base knob and RCAs out here. They do need to go up towards the radio. Same thing with our uh, remote turn on wire. And uh, we still need to hook up our ground here, but we have it in the location. We just need to put it there on that stud. So what we need to do is start running this. We're gonna go up underneath the carpet as well head towards the radio. We have to go get the radio out so we can install our line out converter. Our speaker wire output from the amp, we're gonna go towards the back, towards the trunk area. Now we're gonna tuck underneath panels. We don't need to totally dis disassemble the back area just to run the single guy. So we'll do our best to tuck that all the way to the cargo area. So we continued running that speaker wire. We're just basically tucking it up underneath panels. Now, you can use the same technique. Go ahead and pop off your panels to run your wire. Considering it's just a single uh, set of speaker wire here, we're gonna just tuck it up underneath, pushing it as far up there as possible. And we're gonna work our way back to the truck area. All right, we got our sub all hooked up. We fed our wire, got that all connected there. That's all done. What the factory does is actually puts a little crimp in that bolt just to prevent the nut from falling out or backing all the way out and losing it here in the engine bay. Now adding accessories to it adds a big problem because that nut, if you just impact that off without filing down those little dimples or those crimps in the end of the bolt, it shears off. You'll totally break the bolt. Um, and uh, unfortunately you'll have to replace it. So the alternative is you loosen it so you can pull the terminal off, 
we put some vice grips to hold it on the other side there. And then we filed that down. So we got rid of those, uh, those little crimps on the outside that prevent the nut from coming off. And then we slowly backed the uh, nut all the way off without breaking the bolt. We went ahead and put the uh, positive on there. We've, we cleaned up that other wire that was there as well um, and put a new ring terminal on. And then we put the nut back on and uh, got that all secured back in place. Obviously the negative is still off the battery and we'll keep it off the battery until we're done. But at this point of time, that is done and all cleaned up finally. We ran everything down here. What we did with our wire coming through the firewall, so we actually split loomed it, came up and around the factory fuse panel. We created a little ABS mount here, a little S band here, and we snagged that little bolt there. Um, that's just extra ABS that we had left over from our amp mount. Mounted our fuse holder to that. It's nice and sturdy, it's accessible. And then obviously we split loomed it all the way up to the battery terminal there. So that is underneath the hood. Basically we're done except for hooking up the negative, but we'll do that once we're all done. With that negative off, let's head back inside the car and prep our ground. So for the ground here, again, if we pull this back, we went ahead and got their amplifier all grounded. We took off that plastic ring, just give us a little bit more flexibility there. With that done, while we're up underneath the carpet, and the carpet was up and out of the way because it's so loose, we fished our RCA's remote turn on the wire base knob cable just up underneath the carpet there, and that's where we came out. That panel's only held on with a T20 Torx screw, and that just pops on down, giving us the axis we need to pull out from underneath the carpet there. Now, next we need to pop the radio out so we can connect our line-out converter back there and uh, all these connections will connect to that line out converter. All right, so we're here in the car, and at this point of time, what we need to do is get the radio on out so we can fish our RCA's remote turn on wire up into the dash and connect our line out converter to the factory audio sound system. T20 torque screws, remove those. Okay, so once those two screws are removed, the rest of the panel is actually just held in with clips here. Okay, disconnect our hazard switch here. There we go, perfect. Now, next it's gonna expose one, two, three, four T20 torque screws. Now with those four screws now removed, Grab our radio, go ahead and slide it on out. Now, this back behind the radio is the harness we need to tap into. Now, ideally, let's just go ahead and disconnect the radio so we don't do any damage to the vehicle or the radio. We got our radio on out. Now, carefully set this guy off to the side. Now, our vehicle does not have the factory amplified sound system, whether it's the Fender Audio or whatever it could be equipped with in this generation. Um, so we can just simply tap into here. If you have a factory amp already installed, your line-out converter will need to tap into the factory amp, not here at the radio, just because your factory amplifier is going to have some sort of crossovers. Um, and so we don't want to tap in back here. We want to go probably after the amp. So because um, we don't have an amp, let's go ahead and identify which speakers we need here. Let's go back to the bench to show you how we're gonna set up this line-out converter and uh, really where all the wire is gonna go. All right, so we're here at the bench. Let's talk about this line-out converter. Now in the box here, it's gonna come with the line-out converter itself, as well as the harness with this specific pack version. Now in your harness here, yellow and black is gonna be your constant power and ground. So usually we'll tap into constant power and ground back behind the radio. Brown is generally an audio ground. So if you have a ground loop or buzz or engine whine or alternator whine in the speaker, um, you'll need to hook this up. Generally speaking, as long as your ground and RCAs are decent on the amplifier, this won't be needed. This is the output for your remote turn on. So we're gonna connect this into the long blue wire that we ran to the remote input of our amplifier. So as soon as this unit detects audio over the system, it'll put 12 volts to this wire, hence turning on that amplifier for you. Um, signal inputs. Um, essentially, we're just going to piggyback or tap into the factory speakers 
um, and rob that signal and essentially it will feed our line out converter that signal what it's going to do is basically step down that signal to a low level output and essentially that's going to feed our amplifier that low level input that it needs to play the audio that we're amplifying now, generally speaking, I forgot to mention, usually there's an RCA end to the bottoms of these. We've already cut off the RCA ends. We don't need them. We're gonna strip all these wires back and uh, we'll head back to the car to show you how we're gonna um, solder these connection in to the factory wire. Let's wiring. talk about this harness where we're gonna connect our line out converter. We've already started here. Now in this connector, there is this brown socket or a set of pins that's in the main harness itself. Now, there, it goes basically rear, front, front, rear, going from top to bottom here. And the pin on the side here, all the pins in that row, basically are all your positives and your negatives here. So, the first set, or a, pin A1, A2. So, A2 is this brown with a red stripe. It's this twisted pair. The red stripe is positive, and it black stripe is negative, and that's gonna be for the right side speaker. For the front, just below that, your brown with a green stripe is your positive, and brown with a blue stripe is your negative. That's gonna be for your left side front speaker. Again, we'll throw the pinouts up on the screen here so you have that information to know exactly what each one does. Uh, but essentially here, there is our wiring colors. Now, the way that we're tapping into this, you could essentially use T-taps if you wanted to. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna solder our connections on and we've already made two connections. We haven't soldered them yet. The way that we're doing that is basically we're separating the shielding. We're putting a hole through the factory wiring and threading the needle or threading our wire through that wire and then we're gonna solder on. So we're gonna show you our technique using some wire strippers. And then finally here is our positive and negative. So our yellow wire is gonna to go to this red with a yellow stripe, and our ground is gonna to go to the solid brown in these two pins here. So let's make our connections. All right, so we went ahead and made our connections here. Solid white goes to brown with a green stripe. White with a black stripe goes to brown with blue stripe. And then other speaker, our solid gray goes to brown with the red stripe, and our gray black goes to brown with a black stripe. So we went ahead and soldered on all those there. Power and ground is over here as well. We got that done. We already uh, taped up our power, but we'll tape up our ground and all the other connections. And then we're gonna loom up our harness. All right, so we got our connections all taped up there. Now we're gonna re-loom the harness with some high temperature Tessa tape. All right, so we went ahead and connected our line-out converter after we got everything loomed up here. Our blue wire off our line-out converter now goes to the remote turn-on we just crimped on there. Essentially, that's it. So we'll tuck this down into the dash. And at this point of time, we can get the radio back and reinstalled here in the dash. So we went ahead and got the negative back on the battery. Everything's done underneath the hood. All right, so we got the radio all back in. Everything's all reassembled here. And we've got everything cleaned up for the most part up underneath the seat here looks super clean and the seats all the way back um, so as the seat is actually in its natural forward spot and uh, with the floor mat in you will actually barely even notice it's there uh, but we did actually go ahead and set our gains with an smd dd1 so those are all set to the uh, factory radio and at this point in time we are just about good to go Like I said before, if you want any of the parts that we used in today's install, we'll link them down in the description of the video. This thing bumps, it sounds awesome, so I totally recommend um, this setup in your TIG1 at home. Thanks again for watching, be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe, we post great content on the channel all the time, and we will see you in the next video.